capsule look at what has taken place as we head to the second quarter. Aerial coverage being brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on Triple Tread Technology. Moments ago, David Aldridge talked with the head coach of the East, Doc Rivers. Doc, we had a first quarter. You said that they had a little bit of pride and they wanted to play a little better than they did last year, and they did. Yeah, they did. You can see they want to push the ball up the pace. Obviously, we want to slow the ball down for Yao and Tim, so that wouldn't be very smart. You know, we were trying to figure out how can you have a bad option on a play when you coach a team like this. <laughs> how much fun is this for you after the season last year, getting back and having an opportunity to play with, with this great team and coach oh, this team? It's great. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at last year and this year. It's about players, though. When you when you get players to give any coach a chance, and I'm just having a good time. Thanks very much. Thank you. I think one of the great stories here is when you talk about Doc Rivers and Byron Scott, Jason Kidd on this drive. James not able to finish, and now here is Howard with a follow-up. But, uh, Marv, just to finish it up, you think of coaches, when, it, when a coach goes to an 18-64 and 64 year and a couple losing seasons like Byron Scott did, very s uh, seldom do you get a chance to stay and, and get the fruits of your labor. They've been able to do that here in New Orleans now. And you see Doc Rivers, uh, a terrific player, played in the 88 All-Star game. But for him to take the losses for three years there in Boston and for Danny Ainge to recognize that he didn't have a team he could win with, and he had a terrific coach. So they stayed with those two guys, and here they are, uh, both coaching the All-Star game today. I think that, that says a lot about both of these organizations. And Brandon Roy of the Portland Trailblazers, who just checked in, is able to hit the jumper. Yes, Doc, in his fourth season as head coach in Boston and coaching in his very first All-Star game. Joe Johnson of the Atlanta Hawks and Ray Allen of the Boston Celtics have come on. Jason Kidd back on the floor. Able to knock it down. So the East with a 38-32 lead. Once again, Brandon Roy. Well, he's, he's done double duty. He had to play in the rookie sophomore challenge on Friday, putting up pretty good numbers and being voted to his first All-Star game. This has to be a big thrill for him. Brandon last year's rookie of the year. Here is James, rebounded by Roy. The Trailblazers struggled recently, but uh, they've been one of the surprise teams of the season. A record of 28-24. Back comes LeBron James. Kid with the look away to James. He was so surprised there was no one around him. He hesitated for a moment. <laughs> There's not a lot of defense being played out here, Marlon. I don't really? know if he was surprised <laughs> really? that someone was going to come around and block his shot. Ray Allen misfired, rebounded by Roy. We are early in the second. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, and Reggie Miller. And David West with the wide open shot. Now, Chris Paul, what, what a great player to watch. How about the other night, the double overtime game in Phoenix? He had 42 points in that game with a long jump shot by Joe Johnson. But a stat on, on New Orleans, the last two years in overtime, they are 13-0. and 0. They get into overtime. They can't lose. It's amazing they played that many overtime exactly, games. yeah. Seven-point lead for the East. They've led by as many as 11. Here's Roy. Well, you listen to Byron Scott, and he's saying that Chris Paul might be the closest guy to Isaiah Thomas when it comes to toughness as Ray Allen knocks down another three. With that toughness, he's not going to take anything. He's a great floor general, and for his size, he's a really great leader. Nowitzki, played by Kidd, which is an interesting matchup at this point. Could be practice. Yes. <laughs> And a foul is called as uh, Howard tried to close out on Stoudemire. Made contacts at White Howard with his first. And Amari Stoudemire will head to the line. East up by eight points. As we take a look at the Western Conference standings, New Orleans percentage points in front of Phoenix. Lakers just a game and a half back. Followed by Red Hot Utah, and San Antonio, Dallas, Golden State, and Denver. Houston is right there. They've been on a, a tear with eight straight wins, so only four and a half games separating teams eight and nine with the leaders. Yeah, five, a five-game swoon in the West. Could, you could go from first to eighth, so you better be very consistent in this 30-game sprint we have to the finish and uh, going into the playoffs. 
Johnson back to uh, three-point territory. Carlos Boozer with the rebound. He just came on. Coach, that's why I'm in favor of the top 16 teams playing for the playoffs. Best records, no matter of conference. Reggie always gets a pop in <laughs> for that theory. It never fails. Well, we know this is a guard-oriented game. Joe Johnson knocked down the three. And here you see Ray Allen, one of the best three-point shooters in the game. Could have used him in the three-point shooting competition last night. Might as well stand up there and say no, we'll do Go boy, have a good one. Have a good one. That'd be the last time. Thanks, Simon. In my face. Go hack it. Go and say. Stop hacking. That's not right. <laughs> Great little interchange there. Tim Walsh, the trainer for the East, as he was giving the rosin to Jason Kidd, he said this might be the last time in reference to the fact that uh, if Jason Kidd does go to Dallas, that uh, that little exchange they had before the game uh, would not happen again. It's a little lighthearted <laughs> moment there. Well, it's lighthearted for them. What do you think Devin Harris is at home watching this game saying, it's not lighthearted on my end? That's yeah, tough. We forget about uh, uprooting people and changing places and stuff. It's not easy with families. Chris Paul able to knock it down. Here's it from the crowd. The East now by five. The uh, trainer for the Eastern Conference, Tim Walsh, also the uh, trainer for the Nets. His kid fires away. Came up short on that three-point attempt. I think he put some stick on his hands yeah. there instead of rosin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Byron Scott and Doc Rivers have used the entire roster with four minutes gone by in the second quarter. And a... Reach and foul is called on Joe Johnson. Let's check in with Craig. Well, Kobe, everybody wanted to know once you came out, if you're out for good, we saw him wrap your hand, put ice on your knees. How difficult is it for you, you to say you're not playing anymore this day? It's very difficult. You know, everybody was, all my my friends here were talking trash to me, saying once the game gets going, you know, you, it's going to be tough for you to sound. But, you know, I, I want to play. I desperately want to play. But you also have obligations to, to the franchise. So you look at this warm-up and you see all the patches from your previous All-Star <laughs> games. It's hard to believe that this I is know. your tenth All-Star game. I know. I know. It's unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. It's been a great experience. You remember your first one? New York City. New York City. That was. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I was extremely nervous. So Kevin threw me that lob, and then my jitters went away. We reported earlier tonight that it appears the Jason Kidd trade will go through. He will go back to Dallas. What are your thoughts on this West and how everybody's trying to keep up, maybe with the Paul Gasol trade and the Shaq trade and everything's going on? Well, I think it makes the game more interesting. And, uh, you know, the Western Conference is tough to begin with. I mean, you're talking about two teams who, you know, Phoenix has, you know, won 60 games, Dallas won 67 games, and they're doing nothing but get better. So it makes the West extremely competitive. Well, good luck. Let's hope you don't get hurt again. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. That counts with a foul. LeBron James going glass for his third field goal, and he will head to the line. Oh, he's a one-man fast break. When he gets ahead of steam up, you're not going to stop him. He's so strong. There you see, takes the hit and just the concentration, get it off the glass, a chance for a three-point play. Foul committed by David West. Uh, Kobe Bryant of the Lakers will get back into action on Wednesday against the Phoenix.